Mr. Poseidon. Hey, hey, how you doing, everybody? Hey, everybody, how you doing? Mr. Poseidon here. That's right. I am Mr. Poseidon. For all the new people here tonight, welcome to the show. I'm glad you showed up. Tonight, as you guys know, we're going to have a guest on tonight, a dynamite guest. This guy's got a lot of followers, a lot of people following him. This is the L.I. Sharkman. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, L.I. Sharkman. You can find him on Instagram. We'll be putting that down, posting it for you after the show. You can follow him on there. And also tonight, a lot of you are here tonight for this lovely little giveaway tonight. That's the Salt X Reel. It's in black, and it's the 6,000 Reel. That's right, the 6,000 Reel. Okay, guys, so let's start off by saying hello to all the uh, subscribers here, all the people who are on the show. I'm very happy tonight, very excited. Let's get off the shades. That's enough of that. Let's get on the viewing see. glasses, right, honey? All right, so also, also I want to say definitely to my wife, hello, darling. Thank you for your help, sweetheart. My lovely wife. How you doing, sweetie? Hi. Look at her, she's all happy and smiley. Let's get on Mrs. P there. Hey, Miss P. Give it a little bit to the right there, Mrs. P. A little bit more. Add a girl, there you go. Put that mic up nice and close. Gotta Hi, always everybody. remind the wife, you know? There she is. Thanks, honey. Thanks for everything today. Thanks for everything you've done for me. Uh, yesterday was kind of bad. I wanted to knock you out, but that was okay. That was okay. It, we're, we're beyond that right now. But uh, other than it. that, also I want to mention, I did go down surf fishing. I was down in uh, South Jersey. I don't know if you guys know uh, Island Beach State Park. What a beautiful place. I mean, Montauk is my favorite, but when I hit Island Beach State Park, no, it didn't turn into my uh, brand new favorite place. Montauk, I will always have that special love for. But Island Beach State Park, what a place, guys. What a beautiful place. I, re I suggest to people down there, get down there, hang out. It's a beautiful place down there. Uh, I stayed at the, what was it called? The Island Beach Motor Lodge. It's right next to the entrance of Island Beach State Park. And remember, you need your permits. I have all my permits to get on the beach and drive. It's a luxury and it's beautiful over there. White sandy beaches like you've never seen. During midweek, if you're there, I promise you this, you will feel like you're in the Caribbean. All right, it's a 40 degree Caribbean at this time of year, but it was nice. It was beautiful. I also got to fish with my buddy Kevin who I met he's in the neighborhood up here uh, also his buddy which is grandpappy who I never knew was his friend and grandpappy's been on since the start I want to say hello to those guys Kevin you're a dynamite fisherman and I say that because he's another guy I remember when I went out with him that night he was like listen Mr. P we're gonna stay out all night till the morning and I was like listen I usually stop about one too I didn't say that, but the guy is hardcore. And those are the guys I like to fish with. Dynamite time with him. We didn't catch many fish there. I ended up landing one fish, lost two, got a couple of hits. Uh, same with Kevin. He had a couple of hits, but he did, uh, he did. I think he did lose one. I'm not even sure, but we fished our hearts out. We fished jetties. We fished the beach. Far, down, left, everywhere. Everywhere you can imagine. The problem was... We had south winds, and those winds kind of hurt us. And uh, we were looking for the westerly winds, get in there in our face, and we didn't quite get them. The last day, though, we did get south, south uh, west, southwest winds, which helped us a little bit, and I was able to score that nice striper. So let's get on to the subscribers right now. I want to say hello to everybody, and let's start off at the top. Also, honey, you got that picture with uh, Adrian tonight and his son? Yeah. I want, I want you to put that up for a minute because let me tell you guys, this was an excellent time. Adrian came by tonight. He was the winner. And my wife's telling me, lower the music. Yes, I will, darling. So Adrian came by tonight to pick up his waiters because he told me he's going to be at the Palisades Mall, which is kind of close to my house. And I said, listen, instead of me sending them to you, why don't you just come by? So he drove by tonight. I got to meet his son, Alexander. Alexander, very nice to meet you. You're a future... Uh, fisherman, that's for sure, especially with your dad by your side. Follow everything he says, and you will be just as good as your dad because Adrian is a good fisherman. Here they and, are in the shot. Yeah, there they are in the shot. Yeah, that was tonight. They came by. That kid's a dynamite kid. He was so nice. Alexander, so thank cute. you. 
Thank you. I was proud to meet you. I was very happy. And congratulations and always again to Adrian. For and congratulations, that, uh, yeah. Drawing win. That's right. He won that uh, giveaway of the Drift Waiters. Okay, so let me get on by saying, okay, let's start off. Edwin Rivera. I sent Edwin Rivera an extra, extra large hat. And he, when he tried it on, he was here for the, uh, for the guest, and it was just too big. Went and picked it up. Got a nice little hat for you, uh, Edwin. I'll be sending that out tomorrow. Also, let's keep going. For, hey, slow down, honey. Mario Gandini. What's up, Mario? How you doing? David K. Joe Terra. Joe, it's always a pleasure to see you here. Carl Newman, another excellent fisherman who turned me on to uh, Island Beach State Park. Thank oh. you for that, Carl. You are a dynamite fisherman. You will always be a dynamite. The only guy I know that can throw a 95-ounce weight with his regular finger with a braided line and not get cut. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Anyway, let me continue. Heaven and Hell Outdoors, darling. One of the best black fishermen I've ever seen. I mean, she is the talk. Blackfish. King, fish. Rockfish, yeah. Uh, she is the uh, top king in the world. That woman just catches fish. And if you see her Instagram, you'll see. I'll leave a link on the bottom also at the end of this video. You'll see that she caught a nice tog. I think it was yesterday. I'm not sure, but she did post it. Let me continue on. Alexander Ayala, what's up, buddy? Kevin Hastings. Yep, that's the guy I went out with. Kevin, where, what's up, buddy? Uh, let's continue. Uh, what's that? V Churn? Is that my saying that right, honey? She's like yeah. shaking her head. V Churn, oh. what's up, buddy? David. How you doing? Nice to see you. David K. John Garcia. Rick Hernandez. Rick has been fishing the last few nights. I'm not going to tell you where, but I will tell you that he has been catching tons of slot fish. He's been doing really good in the areas that he's been going. Surf fishing San Francisco. San Francisco, here I come. All right, San Francisco, nice to see you here. I'm proud to have you here all the way on the West Coast on the other side. Uh, let's continue on that. Honey, if you just, okay, sir fishing. Okay, John Francisconi. John, I'm going to be seeing you this week, that's for sure. John won a, <laughs> a lure a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and I still have it here in the house. He told me not to send it because he lives by me, and I usually meet him down in Piedmont. Uh, Bruce Bain, the Mattituck surf rat. Now, Bruce Bain was just voted in in Rhode Island as the president to the uh, surf fishing club there. So, Bruce, congratulations on that. I will be joining that club also myself. I spoke to him uh, this morning. And uh, let's keep going. Joe Terra, we said hello. Brian Testa. Brian, what's up, buddy? Another Rhode Island fisherman who I actually met personally. He was on the show a few weeks back. Brian, another Excellent fisherman who fishes hard. What's up, buddy? Who do we got here? John Carlo. John Carlo, what's up? John Carlo fished with the Long Island Shark Man. He's other loan also as Lore Walker. John Carlo, nice to see you, buddy. Let's continue on this. Uh, who else we got? Mario Gandini. Mario Gandini. What's up, buddy? We're going to put that order in for those bucktails. That's mug them up. Bucktails. That's uh, Mario Gandini. Excellent guy. Excellent bucktails. I'm on that list for those bucktails. Uh, Mario, make sure they're nice and thick for me, those tails. I love them thick. Anyway, Jesse Anderson. Good evening, Jesse. Nice to see you here. I know you haven't been here before, and I'm so glad that you're here tonight. So, continuing, Edwin Rivera, we spoke. Grandpappy, yo. Hey, Grandpappy, how you doing? Now that I know who you are, good friend of Kevin Hastings and also uh, my friend. He's been here from the start. Okay, honey, I lost it. There you go. Uh, who else we got? I don't want to miss anybody. So right now we got that going on. We got everybody pretty much. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Do you see anybody I missed, honey? If you see, please mention it yourself, sweetheart. Sure. All right, so we're going to bring on yes. our okay. guests. Oh, yeah. The first... This guy, let me let me start off by saying, he is the Long Island Shark Man. This guy catches some fish. I'm going to put up some pictures, some video tonight. I was, you know, I like guys that fish hard. This is another hard surf fisherman. He also fishes striped bass and, excuse me, gentlemen, ladies. He also is a hunter. So he fishes upstate New York and other areas. Alexander Ayala, we said hello, yes. Uh, he also fishes upstate New York. This guy is hardcore. It's in his blood, and he's not going to lose it. This guy's got something like 30,000 uh, followers on Instagram. I think it's, I don't know, 100,000 plus on TikTok or even more. But uh, he's followed because he knows what he's doing. He's a good guy, 
and uh, I can't wait to show you those some of those videos. Some of them are pretty cool. So let's start off by saying hello to my buddy, Chris, and that's AKA the Li Shark Man. Let's see, because I think that we might have lost the connection. We might have lost the connection. All right, let's try it again. Let's get him hooked up, honey. In the meantime, in the meantime, uh, we'll miss, uh, who, who do we got out there? Isaac Carlson. Isaac Carlson, what's up? Cape Cod Canal Fishing. What's up, everybody? How you doing, buddy? All right, let's give him another shout, honey. No worries, no worries. We're going to get him on. I mean... Last week, uh, Chris had a bit of a... Uh, oh, yeah, there he is. He's back. Okay, we're going to get him on right now. Put there him on. And go. here we go. So, L.I. Hey. Shark Man. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the L.I. Shark Man. Chris, what's up, buddy? What's going on, guys? What's going on, Mr. T? Okay, just one second, uh, Chris. Stand right there. I'm just going to reset the volume here, and I'll put you right back. Hold on. We are. Chris, are you there? I could hear you. Yep. Yeah, you want to fix that uh, screen, honey? Great, Chris. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you? <laughs> Great, man. I, I know I've been bugging you for months. I'm like, Greg, I want you on my show. I want you on my show. You're like, listen, I'm in the middle of catching a shark. I can't be on the show right now. But I'm glad you're on the show, buddy. It's been a <laughs> while. I'm, I, I really am, man, because I love watching your videos. And I have to tell you, Theo Spiro, what's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Total Nabishin, what's going on, man? So uh, I want to let everybody know that Lore Walker, the future of Mr. Poseidon, he was the one who set me up with you because he says, you got to check out this guy. And when I went and saw the pictures and the videos, I was like, yo, this guy is some bad, excuse me, bad bleeping fisherman. <laughs> but anyway, he, he is. And uh, I want to let you know again, Lore Walker, Thank you very much right now. And uh, also, that's Giancarlo Paolo, right? I think that's him, right, honey? Giancarlo, yeah. Yeah, Giancarlo. Hey, how you doing, buddy? So <laughs> yep, anyway. Giancarlo. Yeah, so I know he took you out. He, uh, he had set me up with you. So let's start off, Chris. How did this whole shark thing start off with you? Because for me, <sighs> catching sharks was like, I was going for stripers. I had the bunker on, and I was like, I got a striper. I got a 90-pound striper. I'm going to break the record. And the next thing I know, I was putting a, <laughs> pulling in a brown shark. But anyway, wow. tell me how it started for you, buddy. That's basically almost the same way. So I was down at, first of all, you could hear me, right? Pretty clear? Yeah, absolutely, buddy. Yep. So I was, uh, I was down at the beach. I, I want to say like... Uh, maybe like eight years ago, maybe a little more. Right. And um, I just wanted to get out. You know, I did a lot of a lot of freshwater fishing upstate, and I I had never really started saltwater fishing. Right. Until about eight years ago, when I decided to go down to the uh, um, I went to the beach to go try for stripers by myself, and I went ahead. I I uh, I like like you said, used bunker, just cast it out. And I was waiting, waiting, and then finally something just, just takes my line. Like, Rod, like just freaking this is the, the drag just peeling peeling and uh i'm like oh my god i got a i got a big fish on so i thought it was like a monster striper but then again like i'm calm i'm going you gotta you gotta think i'm going from freshwater fishing you know like largemouth bass right small mouths and then all of a sudden i get this you, you know even if it was an average size striper bass it's still big for me from the transition from uh freshwater to salt water so I'm waiting there, and the thing just takes off, and I'm like, oh, man, I got something big. Yeah. And I'm reeling, reeling, and I'm like, this is way too big. So then I'm still reeling, still reeling. I don't know. Maybe it's like six, seven minutes in. Right, And right. I called my buddy who was at the beach uh, uh, across the way, and I said, hey, can you come over, go come across to the beach? I got something on. I might need your help. So he came running down. So we're reeling it in, reeling it in, and then the line just snaps. And I was like so devastated. I was like, "Oh my god, this is the first day I'm fishing out. I lose the biggest fish." So I go go ahead to the uh, to the tackle shop, and I asked them uh, if they could give me heavier line because whatever I had, it was it was big. I lost it. Whatever they give me heavier line, bigger hook, and everything like that. And I will go back out there. So I drive another like 30 minutes back to the same spot that I was at, and I cast it out again. Boom! The same thing happens. I say within like five minutes, just t starts taking off peeling zzz, zzz, zzz. and i'm like oh my god here we go again and my friend's looking at me like i'm crazy he's like how, how is this happening like so it's got taken off taken off 
and I'm reeling it in, reeling it in, reeling it in, and after I don't know, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes, you you, you see on it was maybe like two to three foot swells that day, and you could see in the incoming wave, maybe like I don't know, 25 yards offshore, you see uh, the silhouette of a shark, not nothing big, maybe like four foot. And my friend's like, yo, you got to cut the hook. You got to cut the hook. Like, I'm not going. And my friend just, like, literally ran back to the parking lot. He was so scared. So I'm like, I'm not I'm not cutting the hook. I'm not cutting the hook. Like, I want to get this the hook out. And right. you know what I mean? Because I don't like the whole cut the hook thing. If I could get it out, you know. I'm going to stop you my right there, Chris. My friend thought it was crazy. He's like, what are you doing? I have to ask you, Chris. Uh, I have to stop you there because one thing I know you know when I called you, I asked you right away, do you release these fish safely and your answer to me was absolutely if you remember and uh the thing that i uh represent most is uh the catch and release of fish and also safely not just chucking them in the air and putting them back in and laughing and just One having up. a good right so go ahead 100 I, I want you to talk about that a little bit also because i know you're very adamant about One that up. of course yeah of course so basically make that look, I'll just get cut to the end of the chase of that story. So they basically, I ended up bringing it in. I saw that it was a, uh, a shark and I wanted to get it back out as quick as possible. You know, I, I was fascinated by it. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, the first time saltwater fishing and I catch a shark. My friend's like, I asked him to try and help me. He's like, no, no, I want to, I'm not helping. Like, are you, you're going to lose your fingers, this and that. So I go over there. I, I take the hook out with pliers, you know, being very careful. And I send it on its way. I, Immediately packed up, went home. I decided I started doing research what type of shark it was, what how why they're here, why they're around here. I just got like obsessive about it. I just started researching them and like really getting in, into it. And then um going back to what you said about the whole uh releasing them properly, that's a big that's a big concern and it's very it's every whoever if it, anybody gets a shark on the line or you're going shark fishing, like you should really, really know how to handle these fish because that's the biggest part of the catch and release. I mean, the Absolutely. release part is way. Everybody wants to catch everything. You know what I mean? Everything. Everybody wants to catch a fish, but the releasing part is more important than catching the fish. Thank you, so, Chris. Thank you for that. I That's spend a most fact. Of my, That's a fact. Yeah. Of course. But yeah, I mean, you want the fish to get back out there. You want the fish to get out there safely, back to its environment, and everything. So that you know what I mean? Like, the, that's the college of our ocean. Like we get to really take care of it. Otherwise, we don't have. To see kids. Well, these, I mean, I see it sometimes on the internet. They're pulling, pulling not just sharks, just fish in general up, up to dry sand. They're taking pictures, holding it, and taking constant. You know what I mean? Constant. If you look at my, my media and stuff, I have a cameraman with me, whether it's my girlfriend or um, people that I'm with, and they're constantly on the footage. Constantly. You know, you don't see me like. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like posing and stuff like that. Like everything is just, as I'm working, the camera's rolling. So it's, you want to get, keep these fish in the wash is the number one thing. Um, a lot of people say, just cut the hook, cut the hook, cut the hook. I mean, if you don't have experience with the fish, I would say, yeah, go ahead and cut the hook. But that's the last thing that I like to do because a lot, a lot of people say how, uh, oh, the hook will rust out in the mouth. That's the biggest misconception ever. And you hear it, con I hear, at least I do, I hear it constantly. Oh, leave the fit, leave the hook in the mouth. It'll rust out, it'll rust no. out. No, it won't rust out. It's, That's right. It'll take a very, very long time for, for those hooks to uh, rust out, which is, and then another thing is, is when uh, guys go shark fishing, whether it's up here, down in Florida, um, we use circle hooks. So the circle hooks obviously help um, Yes, keep the fish absolutely, better, Chris. Up here in New York, and everything like that, as you know, with this, yeah, right. Yes, the go ahead, say it, buddy. You know that, better than recently, me. Recently, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. They changed, and we use circle hooks. So, Chris, we're just gonna give you another call back because it seems that the screen is frozen up, but that's okay. We hear everything live. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna call okay. you right back. Just give you a quick uh, break right there. So again, I want to say hello to everybody while my wife it. is taking care of that. Uh, Ebeth Hastings and Stephen Hastings, thanks so much again for showing up. I didn't say hello tonight. Newly made, newly made grandparents. Chris, welcome back. We got you back again, no problem. There we go. Now I could see you. Oh I yeah, there you go, you buddy. Good, 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 good. I'm glad. If it happens again, we'll just do it again. Uh, we are not CSNBC or CNN or Got Fox it. News, so <laughs> we will uh, do the best we can for my subscribers. I'm glad everybody's here tonight. 
Again, I want to say hello to some newer people I didn't say hello to earlier. I think it was Isaac Carlson. Uh, I didn't, again, I mentioned uh, uh, Stephen Hastings and Ebeth Hastings, some of my top subscribers who've been here from the beginning when that was at negative two, I think, subscribers, honey, right? <laughs> right. But uh, they were here. So continuing on with Chris. Chris, so you got into shark fishing, and obviously you got good enough where you said, you know what? So uh, I know you've taken out a couple of people uh, on a friendly basis, and you've taken them out, and you've gone fishing with them. What got you into that? Into into what? Like uh, into into like taking like people out? Yeah, <laughs> taking taking people out with you. Family? Yeah, family. Whatever you can. Because uh, I know that you've taken Giancarlo out with you, uh, surf uh, surf fishing for sharks, and you scored also that day yeah. with him. So, right. Yeah, I mean, when I when I when I'm fishing with other people, it's either, I mean, I go to the same spot all the time. Right. So I have my uh, constant beach goers that always yes. help me out. You know, they they watch me. They sometimes a lot of them just come to the beach just to watch me fish, which is it's pretty cool. And then they help me out. Like if I get if I get something big, they could help me out uh, release it. And uh, for example, uh, John Carlo, one day, I was just walking down the beach going fishing. With me, it was uh, two of my friends. No, right. Me, yeah, to me and two of my friends, and I, I, it was er, it was early in the morning, and I saw John Carlo and three of his buddies, and they were stripe going for stripers. They were uh, they were cat, you know, casting from the surf, and I'm walking, walking to go go past them because they, right. they were a little bit before my spot where I was fishing, so where I where I usually fish. So I'm going past them, and I like to say hi to all the fishermen, you know, see what's going on, you know, chat it up a little bit, and uh, so I went over to them I, I asked them i said hey you guys catching any uh you guys catching anything anything hidden they're like no we've been out here for i think he said like two three hours like we caught nothing and i go not even a bluefish he's like no and i'm like it's the water the water's a little too warm there's there's the, the sharks are coming in you know the spinner sharks the sure. browns all, all these different species sharks and uh they're like they're like really they're like yeah but i was like i'm telling you that the water just jumped because that day the water the water temperature before that day was four degrees lower and i knew that once it hit that 74 mark all these guys are going to start coming in sure so i told him i said dude i'm i go dude i'm telling you they're not around here i'm, I, I'm telling you they're i'm gonna put the my rod in, i don't know if john Car carlo told you yeah he told me man he told me this i gotta I stop you for a second he was like yo i met this guy the long island shark man i caught an eight foot shark he was like he knew what he was doing he, was, he helped me john carlo was very uh proud and he says you got to get that guy on your show so go ahead chris continue or li shark man i should say <laughs> so thanks so he was with he was with like, like two or three of his buddies and my number one thing is uh, of course i like to fish but i like it like i get more enjoyment when i see somebody else catch something i mean every it, it's like yes. stages in in your, your like fishing career or, or any kind of career you have like you like doing it mm -hmm. yourself first and then once you see other people do it by you teaching them or showing them like how to how to the ropes then it's like it's even better so anyway i saw them and i'm like yeah you guys don't believe they like i could see in their face they didn't believe me so i told them i said listen give me a half hour just watch come over if i grab one i'll let one of you guys reel it in and they're like no way no way and then john <laughs> calls like ah, whatever he goes i got one an hour he goes i could spare a half hour so they all come show over the video. yeah so, cast it out, so, so so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna show a couple oh, of your guys. pictures first and a couple of your videos so honey uh yeah. let's put up some of those pictures first Sure. Uh, so, these pictures are amazing, guys. Wait till you see this stuff. Susan Pooley Africa, hello, darling. Thank you so much for showing up again. Please say hello to your husband, He's Joe Pooley Africa. Tell him hello, and I appreciate you guys always supporting. Oscar Baera, late but here. Oscar Baera is one of my teen subscribers. I think he was Maybe like number 16. Number 15 or 16. 15 or 16. I'm He's not even not sure. 15, 16 years but old. DNYC, He's another guy who's been here from the start. Thank you guys for coming up. Oscar, you are dynamite, man. We are going to go fishing this year at the uh, Hudson when the friv when the uh, fish are up the river. But let's get back to Chris right this. here. He's like a freaking Check acrobat. him out. I love this picture, Chris. I mean, L.I. Shark, man. I love this picture. Can you imagine the size get of that fish. beast on the other line? I mean, this guy is laying on his back about four inches off the sand. This is an awesome shot. 
And hey, you got the muscles to go with it, buddy. But anyway, <laughs> you are the man, bro. That is a great, great shot. Let's go on some of those other ones, honey. I love these I can't, pictures. Go ahead, Chris. I can't, go ahead. Yeah. I, I can't see it, but I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the picture where it was uh, yeah. It was bent up. Yeah. And it was, uh, Hold on, buddy. Yeah. Hold on. Let's. Uh, it, you uh, want to get you wanna, bent? Yeah, get bent. You want to reattach him to the uh, video? What do you mean? You, we're going to uh, do it one time because he says he can't see it. So No, no, no. Cause, yeah, yeah he's I can't not, see the video. Yeah, go he's give. Just watching you. He, okay. You don't. Okay, all right. He's got it on the thing. But it's anyway. okay. If, if you don't. If, if, yeah. Okay. So, it's, so it's here, okay. here. I, I got, I got yeah, a yeah, fish yeah. right here that looks like a mini Jaws. It's you and two other gentlemen and <laughs> some people in the background, Chris. I mean, this is freaking awesome, man. Yeah. I love this. What kind of shark is that? Do he, you, he called it, his uh, caption on the post said, Sand Tiger Shark. Oh, yeah. I've caught that one, but a lot smaller than that. Where's that at? Yeah, I, I can't even. Yeah, Connie, can, can you reattach him in there? Well, give, Chris, me, give me a second, Chris. You're not, are you watching the stream for, on another device, Chris? No. No, I'm, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. But should I be? Uh, no. no, 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 no. You don't no. have to. You don't have to. But you're okay. holding the shark, okay. All right. I mean, almost at the head, and there's two young guys behind you holding the tail. And there's some women, green uh, bikini, uh, no, well, it's not a bikini, but a bathing suit and a black uh, bathing suit looking behind you. But you're holding this tiger sand shark, and the teeth are just humongous on it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, Chris. So we'll oh, show... I think I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know, I know which one you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tell me yeah, about that. Can you tell me about picture. that one? You got the weight. Here's yeah, that, that when was that? I think that was like, I want to say like two or three years ago. Yeah, yeah. But um, that was that that was that was a that was a good one. That was that was uh -huh, a, that was uh -huh. a fun fight, and we had everybody get involved. You know, there were, I think there was a, a bunch of kids also. I kind of told told them about the fish, what it what the why it's here, why they're there. Right. And it's a great picture, you know, with with the. I love coming, it. Like yes, the, that's, the one. that's the one. That's the one. It's just that's the it, one. It's Chris. a great picture. Uh, also, I want to put up the next one. Uh huh. Can you make that picture bigger of, of his? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm do, do you want okay, to see the this next one. picture? Is this is this is at night, Chris. Full moon monster. And you're holding the. I mean, this is a monster, dude. This is Jaws. This is the fish they used for the movie. You're holding it from the top of the uh, fin there. I mean. Yeah, he called it full moon monster. Full moon caption. monster. It's huge. See that tell me about that fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. How long did that freaking fish tell you to, you know, pull in? I, I, honestly, it, they're not as long as everybody thinks because right. I like to get them in as quicker. As quick as you get them in, the, the fish comes in green. They, you know, they have a lot of a lot of life to them. And they're, You're right, Chris. They're very energetic. Thank you, you for that. Out, you know, but um, I think you, you, you're looking at the one that says full moon monster. Can't stress how important yep. it is to keep yes. these guys in the wash. Hope removed and released as quick as possible my goodness so again i mean fish. we have a lot there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, a lot of kids teenagers who like they want to start getting into the shark fish you know there's a there's a couple um guys going viral on on social media and uh everybody like wants to get into it because it's a lot of fun but there's a, a big big learning um part of it you know you got to know how to put these fish back into the water you got to keep them safe keep them in the wash properly hook, remove the hook and that's why i try to pull Post on my uh, on my I try to caption on my posts important things. So like keeping them in the wash. You see, you could see that the, the waves coming in. Yes. To crash over the over the fish, right. and that's what you what I'm trying. I want to portray to all the new fishermen that want to get into the shark fishing. You know, because we want to keep the shark fishing community a, a safe a safe one. You know, the sharks. Thank gotta you get for out that, Chris. Safe. Thank you. You, know, you got to know how to handle the fish. I mean, I, I remember, I remember two three years ago, I was looking on. Uh, I was watching. It was a YouTube. Some kid was fishing off the uh, off the back of a boat. I think he caught a little. I think it was a dogfish, like a sh uh, sand shark. But just what a t terrible way to release! He just threw the shark off the back of the boat, and that's what puts a big damper. Oh. And like, uh, it's just it's a real negative outlook on, uh, okay. on just fishing in general, which is th what we want to try to avoid. Again, I love how you talk about releasing these things fre uh, safely. And that's what turned me on. When I first spoke to you, you would just add him in on that. Listen, I'm not going to be on the show mm -hmm. because this and that. I release these things uh, safely. And I'm glad that you're mentioning this because uh, I have a few people asking some questions here. And it says, what are you catching these guys on? That's Joe Terra. 
So they caught on just, I mean, when I go stripe, striper fishing or bluefish fishing, I mean, you use the same things. They're hitting bunker bunker chunks. That's what they, you know, that's what right. they like. That's why I, I catch an occasional uh, striper and bluefish. Even when I'm strictly going for stripers or bluefish, I still get different types of sharks. You know, there's there's blue sharks, uh, brown sharks. There's, uh, there's the sand tiger sharks. There's spinner sharks. I caught a bull shark up here. Right. Someone caught a nice bull shark in Lido Beach. Um, but yeah, I would say bunker chunks is like the best thing up here. You know, as you go right. down south to Florida, because I do do some fishing in Florida, it changes up down there. Sure. Nice. Uh, I got another question coming in. It says, uh, it's coming in from Bong Ripper 82. He's asking, and hello, Bong Ripper. I'm glad <laughs> to see you on the show. <laughs> Definitely, it looks like Chris knows you. And uh, it says, have you ever been spooled? Oh, that, that's a good one. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is I went fishing with this uh, UFC fighter. His name is Gregor Gillespie. Yes. Uh, you guys should check him out on his uh, Instagram. Gregor Gillespie, he's a very good UFC fighter, and he's the best fisherman in MMA also. Nice. Um, but anyway, yeah, we I went fishing with him, and I have not <laughs> personally been spooled on my gear, but he had a, what did he have? I think he had a 6,000 or, or 8,000, those new BGs, the Daiwa BGs. Yes, yes. And he had that. <laughs> and we had three rods going off at once. So he's grabbing one, I grab the other one, and then the other one's like going. You know, they all three of them hit at once. So I'm like, yo, what are we going to do? And I'm, I'm trying to call uh, um, bystanders on the beach to help fish because I, I get – Whenever st crazy stuff happens, I'll get people just standing on the beach. I'm like, can you help me? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, have you ever fished before? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, you're fishing today. Let's go. Oh, my God. So they start fishing. And then, like, first, at first, they're, like, scared because it looks like there's a train on the other side of the rod. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. But then after the whole experience, it's like they they <laughs> they say, like, oh, what do I got to get to get into this? But anyway, um, so that middle rod was going off, and I told – I. I had my rod going off, so I run over to that rod. I tighten the drag a little bit, let him run a little bit to get these two fish in that were on right. mine and Gregor's line. And um, <laughs> and this is such a funny video, man, on my Instagram. Right. He's, so we get those two fish in really quick. We uh, get them back. We release them back into the into the water quick. You know, we were boom, boom, boom. Good workout, too. And then the middle one, we go run over to the middle one. It looks like there's like 100 yards left of line. And I right. turn to him, and you, there's a video on it. It's so funny. I'm really – you no, know, he's reeling. He's reeling, and I go, I go, bro. He's gonna take all of it. I go, I go. What pound test you have on here? And I go, what's what? And you just see a mono backing. I hate using mono backing. I don't like it. Okay. I, I don't believe in it. I, okay. I, I go right down to the braid. So I go, dude. I go, dude. You have mono back on here. I go. How many pounds is that? How many pounds is the? And this is all going off as the watch is taking right, off. Right, right. And he goes, uh, uh. Uh, he goes, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, he just keeps telling me, I don't know, to every question. I go, what do you mean you don't know? And then yeah. he goes, I don't know. And then just goes, you just see him go like this. It just freaking breaks, and he goes back and say, that was like the funniest oh. thing. Oh right, right, right. Okay, it, so I so, – It's on my Instagram. I forget where. Yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to mention to you right now that after the show, we will have it on the bottom of this video where you can actually go to uh, L.I. Sharks Man's uh, Instagram. He also has a TikTok uh, – account uh you can check his stuff out there fully and you can always ask him questions dm him there and so on if you're not getting everything uh, uh about that also i want to mention here we have the now check this out what this guy writes it's the catterman adventures llc nice to see you on the show i appreciate you being here so he says the truth Huge learning curve on how to get comfortable around them in general, period. Sure, it's easier and safe for you to bring them up on the sand, but it's all at the fish's expense. But I want to tell you, Catterman, that before I had this guy on, the main thing I asked him was, what's up with the catch and release? I want to know about the release. So the first thing he says to me is, I have to release all these fish safely. And also I want to mention right now, about tagging these uh, sand sharks or these fish or these different types of fish that he catches. Now, he's going to give you an explanation because you're not allowed to tag all sharks. I'm going to let him take over on that mm. so he can give you the full explanation. And I, and, and I, and I appreciate that to the Catamaran Adventures LLC. Great uh, uh, oh. thing you brought up. So go ahead, Chris. Let it rip about the tagging all right so thanks Catterman. uh uh 
fisheries yeah the llc i don't know what you guys if you guys are a char a chartering uh, business or you guys got a uh something on uh, on the water but it sounds pretty cool but anyway so going back to the quite to the uh uh what was it to the comment i think it said something about dragging fish onto dry sand and then everything like that that's what i try i want to try and put tell everybody how that's actually the worst thing you could do you got to keep them in the wash dragging them dragging them dragging them up to the dry sand even just to cut the hook if you're going to cut the hook you should be getting in the water getting wet you know that's you got to keep these things in the water that's the biggest that's the biggest thing that's a fact even i know sand. that you want to so work with them in the water if you see me i'm going i'm right i'm going i'm going into the water waist deep sometimes even shoulder deep for the big ones and you gotta just get in there. You know that dry sand is the. That's a lot of the newbies. They they drag their fish up to dry sand, and just like you said, Catterman, it's at the expense of the fish when you're not doing it properly. That's why I try to educate on my pages as as much as possible. And then going back to the uh, tagging. So there's three species on Long Island, as with other states. But as you get into the other states, like I, I fish in plenty of other different states, the the, the rules kind of change and regulations. But um, as for New York, uh, you're not allowed to tag. Uh, um, dusky sharks, sand tiger sharks, and uh, brown sharks, also known as sand bar sharks, not to get them confused with the small dogfish sand sharks. So there's sand bar sharks, also known as browns. So now there, there's a lot of those. Um, not allowed to tag them. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. I mean, supposedly they're endangered. Uh, um, I see so many of them, though, whether it's here, down south, and any of the other states. A lot of my other uh, fishing friends always catch them. I, even when I'm going for striped bass bluefish, I I, I always uh, manage to grab a couple. But um, even a lot of my friends, I talk to them. Once that, once the summer comes in July, August, and they're trying to get stripers and bluefish, they're hitting. Sometimes they're even hitting lures. You know, it's 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 pretty crazy. Right. But they hit blue. They hit the same bait as striped bass and uh, bluefish. But there are sharks here that you can take. And you can help monitor with these uh, um, associations that help monitor migration patterns, um, where they where these sharks are laying their pups. And some of the ones that you can take, there's spinner sharks. Uh, um, you can tag the sand sharks if you'd like, not the sand bar, but the sand sharks. Um, what else is it? There's a, there's blue sharks. There's bull sharks. Um, I managed to get a bull shark this past summer. Um, spinner sharks I always get. Um, a lot of people confuse them with black tips, but black tips come in too. Black, tip, black tips usually come in in like, I'd say late September, August, but there's plenty of sharks that you can tag, you know? What I like to do with the whole education process, you know, a lot of kids, teenagers, and just people who want to try something new because that July and August, the stripers aren't really around because they, uh, the sharks are what come in. So it's nice to like change up the scenery and, and uh, get a nice workout, you know, Absolutely. while enjoying the fish, Absolutely, enjoying Chris. the fight, but also remember, you got to respect them. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for that part right there that is some of the most important words you can hear and i also want to mention again to the catamaran adventures llc uh he answered back and he says chris does a great job at promoting the correct ethical ways of catching sharks want to make sure that wasn't a criticism so he's letting you know that thank you for that catamaran uh it was a great uh uh uh, uh, uh comment. comment that you brought up thank you for that sweetheart uh, thank you for that comment. Also, I want to mention really quick in the middle of all this, because I really don't want to miss anybody, Daniel Moloroski, thank you for showing up. I don't know you, but you're new, and I want to say thank you to you so much. Also, the surf fishing kiddo, Tejita, is that I say that right, honey? That's on near the bottom there, that, that one right there. Uh, thank you for showing up. Janor, thank you for showing up. I hope I said it right. And Giancarlo, thank you for that on my uh, phone right now. I appreciate that very much. Giancarlo did fish with the L.I. Shark Man. So it says, uh, I get, yeah, go ahead, sweetheart. Say it. Say Continuing it. on the next photo, he called this one. Uh, somebody, he Yeah, post that picture. That's a nice one. He put them on the first These sand These are talk. huge fish, man. So what is it called again? Say that. Uh, somebody that he put on their first sand tiger. The first can sand tiger, and there's a guy Where's in that a one? red that? in a red hoodie. He's wearing like a red sweatshirt, and he's holding this see. fish. Huge, huge shark, man. He's wearing a red sweatshirt, and he's got a light on the top of oh, his yeah, head. Oh yeah, that that was a oh man, yeah, yep, yep. That's somebody. Yeah, you that, took that, out? that was one of my one of my. Uh, one of my buddies a uh, long time ago. 
Right. That was like when I first. That was when I first started. I'd say. I'd say. Uh, uh, I'd say maybe like a year after. Um, I started getting into into fishing. I used to fish with him. His, his name is Paul. I uh, right. I don't fish with him anymore, but he he he's so he's so busy with his businesses that he owns and. I wish I could fish him because he he knew not only did he know he's like one of those fishing guys like he wasn't into fishing but when I brought him he became a fisherman. Nice. It's like one of those nice. guys. It's and kind you, of miss fishing with him. And you know what you. you have to you have to admit because we talked about this on the phone that uh, uh, the most important thing here, Chris, it feels really good when you know you've done your duty and your duty is basically you know you're turning on people to how to catch fish correctly and release them safely i'm going to re and i'm going to mention again release them safely it's not a joke imagine you're being pulled out of the water for two minutes right. and you're trying to get air it's not a good feeling it's not so the guy makes sure because right. i know when he was giancarlo even uh lure walker for you guys who know out there he did tell me you know he was very adamant he was very pushy about getting the fish back in the water and that's what makes a good fisherman. It's not a big joke. You're not going to catch these things and eat them. Mm. You want this fish back in the water. You want them back in the cycle of life in the water to do what they're doing. And Chris, I appreciate you so much for that, brother. I thank you so much for that. Also, Jack Frost, Stripe Zika, thank you for showing up tonight. Uh, anybody else I missed, I'll be getting you. I'm constantly looking at the screen. But uh, Chris, Continuing on, let's get on to the next picture here. This Here's one a cool he called one. called Gregor, Gregor the Gift. Gregor the Gift. It's a gentleman who's sitting next to you. You're wearing a uh, red maroon tank top, which I must say, Chris, you look fantastic. Is, is this is this the one? Is this the one with the? Uh, the guy <laughs> is this the one with the great white sign in the back? In the, I mean. No, hold on, hold on. It's a, it's a gentleman behind you, and he's tattooed throughout his top body. He's tattooed all up. Uh, and he's Gregor, giving the thumbs up. Gregor the Gift. Yep, Gregor the caption. Gift, yeah. And you're holding about a four foot, looks like a sand shark Gregor to me. Gregor the Gift. Mm. Yeah, he's got tattoos up to Let's his chest, it. up to Let's his neck. The... Does, he have, is, does he have his thumb, thumb up? Like yes, he, he does. does. Uh, yes, no. that's the one. That's the one. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I yeah. see it. I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you look, look if you look at that picture on the top left, you see a you see a, an airplane with a banner on it. Yes. Is that if that's the same picture we're talking yes, about? Yes, that's it. That's it. It's a little. So little this is yeah, this is a, this is this this is a crazy story. We were fit. Well, um, we were fishing. First of all, not only was the the shark that we caught was tagged, so somebody had already tagged it. Whether it be it was in New York, because you are allowed to tag in New York offshore, three miles offshore. Whether it was in New York or somewhere else. So we ended up catching a tagged shark, but not only that. We took a. It was his. It was an amazing day we had. We took a picture, not a picture, a video, and uh, all of a sudden in the top left corner, we just look, go back to the video after we release the fish, and we look in the top left corner, and it just says uh, something about Shark Week, and it, it was just the craziest thing how like mm -hmm. the picture frame, well the video frame, because we we paused it to get the the picture. It was in the top left. We're like, what the heck is that up there? And it was, oh, my God, it was so crazy. He, he even spoke about it on, on the UFC channel, which was pretty cool. That's how nice. uh, that's how crazy that photo was. Oh, man, that's all so the, awesome, man. The fish you could has tell, a tag. You know, yeah, right. And and you could tell that the gentleman you're with, what a smile. Yeah, He's he came, such he a came happy in guy. with a tag on it, which is pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, also, I want to mention again as they come on, Tattoo, thank you for showing up tonight. Tattoo, your products are going out tomorrow. We're well, sorry, I wasn't around all week. I was fishing down South Jersey, so I wasn't able to get it out. But continuing on, Chris, let's go on to the next picture. Sure. You got some great pictures, Chris, man. This one he calls a bull shark. Uh, yeah, and you're with, I think you're with your uh, your girlfriend or your fiance, Chris. She's uh it's just a giant fish, and she's right behind you. You're wearing a blue nighttime. tank top, and it's at nighttime. Oh, guy? yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell yep, me about that one, that buddy. Right now. Yeah, I see it. That was a, that was a monster. Yeah, that, that's that a was, monster, That was man. actually down south, that okay. bull shark. Nice. Can but, we ask um, who the girl is? Yeah, can we ask who the woman uh, is there? I mean, I hope I'm not getting you in trouble here. 
<laughs> that's my girl. <laughs> no. That's my uh, that's my girlfriend. That's her. Her name's Savannah, and she she just started making an account also called Li Shark Girl. Oh, nice. Because mine was nice. kind of blowing up, and we're thinking like, what if a girl? If, yeah. Nice. If a girl starts catching sharks, she'll uh, she'll yeah. bypass me in no time. <laughs> Absolutely, she's gonna surpass you in two days. I know how that works. <laughs> Holy smokes! I'm like trying so hard to make a thousand <laughs> subscribers. I work super hard at it, and then I see a brand new uh, female come on. Yeah, you'll, I know. Go get and it. Check it out. Check it out. And then I see a brand new female come on, and she's on for two days. The second day, she's got a nice bikini on, if you know what I mean. And the next thing you know, I'm looking at she's got five thousand subscribers. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Hey, listen, I give all those Dude, women credit. Who, I know. Oh, my, it is unbelievable, unbelievable. how they get subscribers, but I try very hard. I'm thinking of putting on a bikini next summer, but I don't know if I'm going to do go that far. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> I really oh, am. Man. I'm thinking about doing it. but that's, Because my wife's funny. like, don't worry, I bought it. Oh, I'll yeah, do that it. Was a, that was a big, big Yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. I'm, I'm talking funny. too much. Here. Okay, yeah, that was yeah, that was the uh, that was that was down that was down in Florida with a couple of my buddies down there who I uh, I fish with. Those guys down in Florida. Uh, if anybody's watching and they fish down in Florida, those guys do it. Those guys are hardcore. There, yeah, they are hardcore. Down down there. I wish yeah. I w I lived down there because I could get into more big fish. But those guys down in Florida, man, and a couple of my my good friends, Matt, Mikey, AJ, a lot of those guys down there, they're. They're hardcore. They know what they're doing. They have taught me a lot of things. Wow. And they have monsters down there. I wish I lived down there. I'm thinking about moving down there. But they, they really know what they're doing, the Florida fishing community down there. Not saying that New York doesn't, but they, they catch some big fish over there. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I've been in Florida, and uh, I've watched a couple of guys pull in. I know there was a guy fishing for tarpon, and uh, he scored in a fish that day, and it was a shark. And I was just amazed. Took him about an hour to bring that one in, dude. It was a huge shark that day, but it was uh, that's when I first started seeing these uh, shark things going on. But in Florida, I know they got a lot. And uh, continuing on that, I want to bring up another picture, which I think is probably one of the coolest. I even told you that to, to my wife. So get this one up this next. One? Yeah, that one. It's this looks like a hammerhead. Barb. Sting oh, it's a barb. stingray barb. <clears throat> That's what was on his caption. Uh, let's see, let's see. And you got these lights. No, on. no, no. I think. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the caption. I think I know what picture you're talking about. It looks like there's two guys and there's one guy holding up. It looks like a hammerhead uh, to me. Da, 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 da. Stingray barb. It's definitely the hammerhead. I know that. Yeah, um, definitely. Oh yeah. And you're holding the hook. You're trying to release the hook. From yeah, the here mouth. we go. Yeah. Again in the okay. wash. Uh, again, I'm going to yeah, mention so guys. Yeah. yeah go so, ahead. so if you if. Go, Chris. I'm sorry. Uh, so, if you notice in the picture, uh, no, it's it's okay. It's like a, there's a little pause between us, so that's why, like, it's it's hard to. Yes, yes. Go ahead, buddy. See when you're done talking. But anyway, so you could see it's in the wash, and uh, me and my buddy there, who I fished down w in Florida with, uh, we're so we're very determined to get the hooks out. We don't like cutting, leaving, like I said earlier in the show, but um. We're determined, you know, he's helping me out. We get that hook out. That hook obviously came out. Look how hard I'm trying. My hand's practically in the shark's mouth. But um, mm. it was cool because we noticed that a lot of the hammerheads, their major prey is uh, stingrays. So we use stingrays as bait down there uh, when we go for sharks because the number one uh, prey that hammerheads go after are stingrays. So that, that big, like, it looks like a metal detector head. It actually acts like a metal detector. So anything it goes over, like if it goes over a stingray that's buried in the sand, the stingray's head can actually sense like the heartbeat of the fish, even though it's hiding. So it'll detect where the heartbeat is, and then he'll just attack. So that's a byproduct of what happens um, under his under his head. That's a, a stingray barb that got lodged in there, I guess, from attacking the stingray. I see. But it's pretty cool how those hammerheads work. That's another fact, one of the most fascinating sharks, but. They are fascinating because um, I'm paranoid of them. Walk, I see the hook out. yeah, I see the TV, and these are fish that will. I don't know if I'm right, but maybe you can tell me right now. But I feel these things attack humans. No, not really? at all. No way. I don't even think. To be honest with you, I would say no sharks attack humans. It, it if if everybody says a shark attack, but it's really a shark accident. It's I see. They're not attack. We're not on their menu. You know what I mean? Like. It, even it 
like people who die from shark from a shark attack it's never like the shark fully finishes a human or anything it's it's it depends how right how big the shark is you know it's like god forbid not going getting into a motor vehicle accident you get into an accident with a smaller car it's not right. gonna do as, as much damage as an 18 wheeler you know and they never finish a human like they're not gonna eat a human whole it it's just mm. by accident they think it's a, a seal or their prey you know and once they get a bite they're like Ugh, that's not too bony okay now i got a nice little question for you which is uh, i've seen on tv on these discovery channels jack frost is out there and he's asking he's saying he's actually commenting south africa is big for sa uh for shark fishing have you ever thought about going to south africa because i know they got a lot of sharks down there oh yeah that's funny jack uh jack frost um yes that's you're 1000 percent right south africa and australia they have a ton of shark fishing over wow. there and they wow. go crazy like the sh Striper, the striped bass community here on Long Island, it's like it's like that over there, except for sharks. Like they go crazy. I actually have a couple tackle shops that were um, messaging me on Instagram about the this the rod wrap, which we'll get into it in a little bit. Sure. Um, they yeah. wanted to uh, get that in their shop because they're so they're so loaded up on shark fishing over there. They like they want some products and stuff. They see my page go viral, a couple mm -hmm. videos here and there. So, but the, you're definitely right. Yeah, South Africa. I'd love to get over there. I want to go to Australia. I think I'm going to actually Australia in a couple months to go uh go Very fish nice. over there i'm coming with you they got Chris. some big big fish there <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that sounds like an exciting time uh also we got edwin rivera he's mentioning here he says uh saw a study where they threw goats blood in the water to attract sharks not many showed up this. then they threw fish blood and dozens of sharks showed up there you we go. are we are not on their menu that's it. That's right. That's so. That's so funny that whoever said that said that because I literally got chills right now. Because yeah, one of my top subscribers is Edwin oh Rivera. God, get attacked by a shark? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, he's a very smart guy. Because every time I get, to, I mean, I'm on the beach five, six days a week for six, seven hours, and I get people coming up to me. Are they going to attack me? Is it okay for this, that, and that? And I like to, I educate everybody about it, and um, that's what I go back to. There was a study they did. They did put. Uh, I don't remember it being goat's milk. I'm sure it was goat's milk. I thought it was like, it was definitely some kind of uh, goat's milk. What am I saying? Blood. Um, <laughs> they put some kind of animal's blood, which he's saying is goat's blood. I, I'm pretty sure that's mm. what it was. And then they put fish blood and they had a couple sharks around the area and they all went for the fish blood as opposed to the, uh, to the uh, goat blood or whatever other blood. I, I think it might be the oils because another thing, another secret that I'm going to, I'm going to share with whoever everybody's watching, but, when you're choosing bait, bunker, whatever it is. If you're going for stripers, bluefish, I've noticed that whatever bait shop has the slimier bunker, that's nice. the better bunker. So like, nice. I go to one tackle shop and they, they charge, they charge me. I mean, I, I I know a couple tackle shops that don't charge me if I post them up on my page and everything, but this one tackle shop that does charge me, they got the slimiest bunker. And All it's right. like, you know what? I, I got to go there because that's what's getting the job done. That's correct. Now, Chris, I want to interrupt again because I want to mention to people who are listening to this who are uh, saying to themselves, you know what? I'm going to go shark fishing. Guys, remember, please remember, listen to this guy speak. Do not take that fish out of the wash, whatever you do. Sharks are not like stripers. They have less ability to stay alive out of the water. That's a fact make sure you keep them in the wash do the right thing don't sit there and joke around for now an and take 10 pictures one quick picture and get it back release that hook safely release the fish safely and get them out there i want to mention also a uh, ankush shamara sharma this kid's a beast i had the opportunity to go surf uh shark fishing with him and we caught like four sharks in the first hour of being there that's wow. ankush Sharma. Shamara, he went fishing with you, Chris. Anka Sharma. I think I remember who that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Mario I remember Gandini who that was. Mario Gandini has a question. Yeah, Are there Baron specific Gandini. spots only permitted on Long Island uh, that allow you to go shark fishing? <laughs> <laughs> Where it's permitted? No, no, there aren't specific spots. It's just like uh, you're going bluefish, stripers, striper fishing. I mean, you don't want to go fishing for sharks where people are swimming or like where it's a swimming area but right you know 
you're not allowed to fish in general where people are swimming. So it's like wherever you're striped bass and bluefish fishing, it's right. It's it's permitted. Good, good, good. I like to hear this. This is good, good, good answers coming from a pro who knows how to fish with these. But also, if if anybody if anybody has yeah if anybody has any questions or anything that aren't uh, that, that we miss or anything like feel free uh, and shoot me a uh, direct message on instagram or tiktok whatever it is and i'll be sure to uh answer it as quick as i can cool awesome very cool uh let's continue now uh what else do we got here anybody asking any other questions i'm just reading up do we throw a whole bunker he's <laughs> asking uh striper seeker yeah pretty much you got to right it's, i mean you know, it, the whole uh, throwing a whole, whole bunker it's hard because you can't ca it's it's heavy you, it's hard to cast ah, that far with a whole bunker so what i do i cut the head off Good and one. then I, I cut the body into four pieces very they're not big pieces they're like maybe i'd say like like that not big not big at all maybe like hey basically like it's, we're going it's, for it's, a it's, trophy cut, striper so, yeah basically yeah and i've caught i've caught some nice stripers on uh on bunker chunks but yeah just cut the head off sometimes i use that head and then i use uh i cut it into four pieces maybe like an inch and a half two inch pieces and you just cast them out you can't the whole bunker it's too it's too heavy to cast Stephen um, hastings is asking i want to let you know uh, yeah i'm sorry uh, i'm sorry buddy like you said we're in like a little bit of a stop there but Stephen Hastings is asking. It's all good. No, yeah. no, no, it's all good. Stephen Hastings is asking. He's one of my top subscribers, this guy. Also with his wife, uh, Ebeth Hastings. They've been around since the beginning and supporting me. So I want to ask, I want to tell that uh, he says, did I see you wearing a fighting belt in one of the picks? Yes, those are for the bigger sharks. Like if we have something crazy big going on, um we throw that on because there's no way you hold you gotta they, those fighting belts have handles on the back for your friends to hold mm, just in case, nice in case the thing's pulling you into the ocean also also so those are for the big ones so you know yeah. we're down to florida or i have something crazy good yeah also we got uh edwin rivera asking again i could tell he was on your uh, site already he's asking do you kayak or drone bait out there So the drone is kind of iffy, you know, you're only allowed in certain areas. What I do is, believe it or not, most of the fish that I catch is on a cast. Uh, um, I do just as well casting as I do kayaking out or droning it out. So it's like, uh, I'd rather prefer casting one because it's easier. I mean, these fish are coming in close to get the bait fish, you know, they're, they're, they're hunting closer to the shore because that's where all those bait fish hang out. So definitely on a, on a, a cast, but if I'm using big, bigger baits, that mm -hmm. I can't cast if I'm down in Florida and I'm kayaking out a, a, a big piece of bluefish or a stingray. I can't cast that. My rod is right, rod right, snapping right, right, I'll right. get it ten feet I in front you. of me. I so that's you. when I got I, I kayak out. But over here, you could just cast it out, man. It's it's. it's I got a, a fun comment here, again coming from the Catamaran Adventures LLC. The real question is, how the hell? Have you not lost your crown jewels yet fighting those big boys that stand up in the sand on no belt? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I have a lot of people comment about that because the big 15-footer, I have it. It's like going into right, my groin. Right, right. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's like it hurts, but, like, I try to keep it on the side, like, right? Like, it's kind of – it's like in my thigh. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. But it hurts, man, like when you're pulling back like that. So sometimes I – in between. Between I'll sit down, I'll put the bottom of the rod in the sand, or I just like to switch on and off. So like if I'm, I'm with one of my friends or somebody else is watching, I see people watching and I hand it to them and everybody gets a little go, everybody gets a break and everybody right. gets involved at the same time. I'm big into that, big into getting people involved, getting into fishing and just so making awesome. it a hobby for more people that aren't, that don't have it as a hobby. So everybody gets to toss it around. It's not always rod on my groin. <laughs> there you go, buddy. It's uh, not for the faint of heart. As that's right. Say. That's right. It isn't for the uh, faint of rod. So Edwin's asking uh, rod reel and line specs. That's what you were talking about earlier. Maybe you want to let these guys know what they should be using or what you're using, actually. So it's very, it's not, it's simple and it's very the rod at least is it's inexpensive i mean i see a lot of guys go crazy 200 300 rods when they're striper 
fishing, bluefish fishing. I mean, like if you really think about it, it's where you're fishing. And if you're fishing, and if you're lucky and you know what I mean, you have to feel that that's why a lot of people say, oh, what's your gear? How much is it? This and that. Uh, let me, I'll get to the gear first. So mm -hmm. I use 10 to 15 foot rods, cheap. You get them at Dick's Sporting Goods. My 10-footer is $20. It's a $20 rod. I've caught a 500-pound stingray on it. <laughs> Big sharks on it. But so uh, awesome. that's like a $25 rod. And then the 15-footer is $70. Bucks, $70 mm -hmm. rod. And then the reels are where it gets a little expensive just because I like to fit a lot of line on it. So the reels I'm using, like Shimano Saragosa's, 20000 25000 um, And then the line for over here on the island, I use 70-pound test line. And then um, when I'm down in Florida, that's when everything else changes. That's when it gets more expensive when you're going for the really, really big ones, like 12 footers, 13 footers, 14 footers. Um, the rod is like, you're using like a tuna rod. And then the reels I use, they're like uh, two, three thousand dollar reels. Um, the Avits, uh, 80 wides. So those, that's, they're like offshore fishing boats when they, when they go for tuna. Those are the ones that I kayak out on the all big baits. But over here it's, it's very, uh, it's cheap, inexpensive, and it does the same job as uh, right. So, two hundred, so three hundred dollars. I got another nice. I try to tell everybody yeah. that if you go if ahead. you feel that you're gonna catch something, go ahead. No, 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 no. You go first. Go. Finish up. Finish up, buddy. I, no, I, I, I was gonna say, like a lot of people say, oh look, I got this, I got this van stall, I got this, the rod, crazy, that crazy, crazy gear. Like if you don't. You could have the craziest gear and the guy next to you can have a $20 rod and a piece of junk reel. If that guy feels that he's going to catch a fish and like you have the faith, you have to have faith that you're going to catch something. If you're just sitting there with an expensive that's rod a fact. and you're just throwing, you're not going to catch anything. At least that's what, that's what with my experience, my grandfather's experience, like my, my dad's experience. That's a when fact. When you have faith that something's going to hit the line, you're going to get hit. When you're sitting there just throwing and like, come on already, like something's going to get you have to have faith in when you're when you're fishing, and when you have the faith, that guy could have the twenty dollar rod, and then you you have your three hundred dollar setup. You guys switch rods, and he's got, he'll catch it on your setup because he you have to have faith that you're gonna catch something. It sounds like people might say, "Oh, this guy's all talking out of his butt," you know, all this, but it's so true. You gotta have faith. I do that. Chris, you're bringing up and when some, I go hunting, like if yeah. you believe that you're gonna get something, you're yeah. gonna get something. You're bringing up some great points tonight because that's a fact. When I go out fishing. I know what rod I'm going to use. I know what reel, and I have faith in those. I feel really good about it. Most of the time, I catch fish like that. Uh, also, I want to mention uh, Kevin Hastings. Thank you. I'll stop throwing the heads back. That's kind of funny. Uh, skate for life. Confidence catches fish. Amen, brother. That's a fact. Giancarlo stated that one. Thank you so much for that. It's so, And Stephen Hastings also says, it's so true that you have to have confidence when you're fishing. That's a fact. Striper Seeker is asking here, what is the minimum amount of line I should use for smaller sharks? The amount of line. I would say, I, I don't know, three, 300, 300 yards um, is, I'd say, the minimum. I mean, that's that's pretty fair. I mean, you could fit right. that on, a, would say, a 6,000 6, um, reel, but I, I would go an 8,000 reel, minimum three hundred yards and the poundage I would keep at like 60 to 70. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. So, okay. So usually my shows run for now, obviously, Chris, uh, you are a top notch guy out there. So we're going to have you on a little longer. Yeah. Plus for those of you guys who want to know how to win that salt X reel, please stand by. I'm fine with that. Yeah, man, I know. And, uh, also it says here, uh, who else do we have here? Honey, that, uh, asked anything fish don't care what you paid that's john francisconi yep. that's a fact he's told me that from the start when i would uh -huh. see him and met him at uh, piemont because they really don't they don't care if you got a line and you're fishing like the old days where you're swinging away with a rock and a, and a hook handmade but uh, right, exactly. they don't they don't know the difference but uh, also i want to let everybody know DN dnc and why i pray to poseidon have faith in poseidon thank you so much for that that's a good thing. I will always try to get the best guests on for you. And I know tonight, one of my top-notch guests, without a doubt, everybody's been a great guest. I'm going to repeat it again. <laughs> Everybody has been a great guest. But this guy here tonight, for you guys who want to shark fish, uh, remember, always fish safe, fish hard, and fish right. And uh, 
the uh, Long Island Shark Man is here tonight to let you know how to fish right. And we've heard tons of good stuff about him. And to the people who are here for the first time about my channel, about my channel, let me get on this one, about my channel, surf fishing videos, mainly striped bass, mainly striped bass. We talk about products I like, uh, live streams, uh, talking about fishing, and obviously having some great guests on like we have on tonight so chris i want to show up some more yeah, i have a few more do we have any more pictures of the videos, the videos. yeah i want you guys to see this video this is pretty cool in watch action. chris here in action here so check this out we don't have any volume do we? it has sound yeah okay. So check him out here. He's actually on the beach here. Chris, you're in shape. You are one dude that's in shape. He like pushed me. Yeah, I got the, I got the beach. I'm sorry. I need water. Get water. Get water. So there's Chris on the beach, and here's one which I love. He's just, the, 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 the shark takes the reel. He go for it right before the water, and you got it, Chris. Tell me about that one right there. That's crazy. Oh man, that one was. Is that recorded? The hit say? Is that the like, one with me. the? I'm trying. There's two of them. One of one of them. Is that the one where right in the middle of the bit, right in the beginning, in yeah. the video it goes, goes down? Uh, I, I, I can just tell you that. It's like it multicolored pole. It just goes down, and you run after it. You dove on your knees, right at the uh, beach. You're wearing your striped shorts and red bottoms, and you're just backing it up slowly. And there's somebody behind you that you're talking oh, yeah, yeah, okay. to. Some guy in an orange, uh, orange uh, uh, bathing suit there. So yeah. that is cool. I'm watching it. So again. listen to this. This was yeah. actually this was crazy. We we're on the. Oh my God, the story is even cooler. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of people comment and say, oh, this is fake, this is played. It's not fake. So I had, I had my, one of my uh, buddies who I just met, an older guy. Uh, and, uh, this guy is unbelievable. He's like, he, I think he's 62, and he runs to rods like crazy. I love it. It's so much fun to fish with. So anyway, when I first met him, which was this day, he he was watching me fish and everything, and he said, uh, "This is it's incredible what I'm doing, how I do right. it and stuff." And my rod's sitting on my right side, and I'm talking to him. He's on my left, and then another one of my, a couple of my buddies uh, that I know from school who were just ha hitting the beach because it was a nice beach day out. They came over to watch me. So me and uh, Mitch are talking, and he goes, "Chris, I got a question for you. These things pull really hard because he had just saw me catch one just before prior." He's like these things are these a lot of lines. Have you ever like, have you ever lost the rod and it went in the water? Literally, as he says, water. The freaking rod drops down, <laughs> goes into the water. It's like going into the water. And then my friend is yet my friend's yelling at me. He goes, "Oh my god!" He goes, "Did you get that on recording? Him saying that? Did you get Mitch on recording? Him saying that?" My friend was standing by videotaping i don't know why she was videotaping but you could see she just caught the beginning of it because it was going and i'm like running to it and she just got the video i was so right. happy she got that yeah. part of the video but she didn't get the vid the part of it just before when he when mitch was like oh my god like have you ever seen it go in the water and it just takes off it was a crazy like that, you can't make stuff like that up you know? yeah you can't was, man that that that, that, that video was just i you know the first time i saw it i was just like that's so cool man period it's cool Cool stuff, and I'm glad you got that on video, and I'm glad I got to show that to the subscribers who showed up uh, tonight. Also, I want to say hello to uh, Lance J, also one of my early subscribers. Lance J's up there in uh, Michigan. Michigan, right? Lance does a lot of ice fishing in the winter. Thanks, Lance, for showing up tonight. I appreciate you very much. You're always here. And you're always forcing everybody to uh, hit that like button, guys. <laughs> it helps me in the algorithm. Helps me. So other than that, let's uh, let's see, see that next video. video. Let's see, see that other clip. video. I hope it's not too loud, guys. I can't seem to control no, that video. Okay. Long. Yeah, we let it play. Go ahead. So this one, uh, Chris, it's taking your rod slowly down. You're wearing white shorts. And you dove, the guy in the white oh, showed yeah. door for it, he missed it, and then you showed up to the rescue. Oh. Mitch, are you all right? That's Mitch. Mitch. <laughs> the guy we was talking to you about. Okay, there you go. He freaking dove, he dove for that rod. <laughs> like, what a savage. <laughs> yeah, but he missed but it. He, you did He missed it. Yeah. And when we, when we put that on... <laughs> We we put that on TikTok and that right. thing, that video got I think like 22 million views. 
Wow. And everybody was just like saying so many bad things about oh Mitch missing God. the rod. But had they known, like, he's a 62 year old guy, he's in shape, but like to die for a rod at that age, like, he's, he's right. a beast for that. So I was like, right. I wish, I hope I could do that, you know? Yeah, you will, buddy, because I'm but, able uh, to yeah, do I it still. At the last second, if I lost <laughs> the whole thing, oh my God, I would have been. That's so cool, Chris. You got some <laughs> great stuff going but on. Yeah, man. You're like an those acrobat. Moments, yeah, you're like crazy? an acrobat, yeah. dude. You're like, when you look like one of those guys, we go to the. Uh, we go to Vegas once a year and we watch those. Uh, what's that called? Circus de Soleil? Jesus Christ, Chris. You're the man right there. You are oh, the yeah, Circus yeah. de Soleil <laughs> guy, man. But of shark fishing, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just good stuff. I'm watching these videos, man. Super, super terrific. All right. So, uh, Chris, uh, slowly fishing, uh, finishing off here. I'm going to put you up alone here. So slowly finishing up here because it is getting a little late for my subscribers. Also, I want to mention to everybody here, uh, thank you tonight. I made uh, over 800 subscribers. I want to thank everybody for that. And I definitely want to uh, thank you, uh, Long Island uh, Shark Man. You helped me get to that mark tonight. You are a dynamite guy. I know my subscribers and myself have learned plenty off you tonight, but... Please, uh, uh, guys, if you have any final questions for uh, Chris, a.k.a. the uh, L.I. Shark Man, uh, please ask right now. Uh, oh, there's uh, Jay Falco is asking, can I use an air cannon in Long Island? <laughs> so I, I was actually looking into those. Um I don't one. I don't think it's safe to use. I'm sure the local authorities will say something about using them. Um, two, it's not really that good. Like the the videos and stuff you see on like Facebook pages and stuff, like it looks cool, but they're not really. It's not really that good because one, some of them you have to like freeze the bait, and like you have to have an ice chunk and then toss it out. It's like it's. I don't think it's worth it. And even if you don't freeze the bait, I think they have like little capsules that you put all the bait in. It never really works because you're using different types of bait depending what kind of, uh, if you're going for like one of the bigger ones down in Florida, like you can't fit that big of a bait in the air can. And then the last thing you need is that thing blowing up in your face. It's too many, it's too many risks. I would just, if you want to get it out that far, just hop in the kayak, you know, uh, put a life vest on and uh, go out there. But again, if you're fishing over here in New York and Long Island, casting sh should be fun. I mean, I caught, I catch 10, 10, 11 footers just casting 25 yards out. All right. So I got more people asking questions here. First off, I got two questions here. What's the details on the charters you, you were running? And there's one other guy, Vishern. He's asking, can he go over the great white shark story? <laughs> yeah, we'll finish so this one up with that. Go ahead, charters, Chris. Charters, um, not... No problem. So the, the first one, the charters, I'm looking to go into chartering. Um, I have a lot, a lot of DMs um, regarding taking people out. I was doing like, like a, uh, it was like a testing the waters to see who would be interested. And quite frankly, like everyone's interested. So I gotta, I gotta, I want, I'd like to start doing that eventually. Um, I'm just so busy, but I'm in nursing school right now. So it's like, I can't, I couldn't, I, I wasn't able to take anybody out. You know, it's, it's, I wish I could, but I think this summer, now that I finish, I graduate in December from my, the nursing program, I'll have a lot more free time and get all my licenses, everything together, and start getting people out there. You know, show them the right way to do it, how to how to do it, get some correct. Uh, also, again, memories built for everybody. And then the second question. Go ahead. Second, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're, you're first. Go ahead. The second question. I don't even remember what I was going to say. Uh, no, no, it you, was the Great White Shark story. Oh man, that was nuts. Um, <laughs> where do I begin with that? <laughs> Wherever well, you I want. I haven't even. Let's. Okay, so yeah, so well, I mean, a long fish. I'm not gonna say where. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna say if it was in state, out of state, only because people start getting. You know what I mean? They're like, oh my god, I want to go for one. I want to. You know what I mean? You should not be targeting a gray white absolutely you know i fish for these big fish and there's a chance that you're going to get one you know and these things are severely severely protected so you, you got to really know how to handle them i don't want to start getting people oh i'm going out for a great white that's not what you should be doing absolutely so make a long story short i do go for big fish and eventually you're going to catch something crazy of to that caliber so i had something crazy pulling the line man it, it was like nothing else it was like a submarine i was 
I was looking around for, for, for like boats that I might have got like caught on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh right. my God, this thing's pulling crazy. Mm-hmm. Make a long story short, um, I got I got him in and it was it wasn't as long as a fight as you thought you think because again I like to really tighten down on that drag and get them in quick. And the bigger they are, it's obviously harder to do that. So I had to switch on and off with one of my buddies that I was with and we never we we just thought it was maybe a big, big uh spinner shark. Because spinner sharks get to like ten feet or like a big, big, big ray. A big stingray. And I'm going on and then I just put the flashlight on him and I just saw the doors open. I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, and he was already in the wash. My friend's like, we gotta cut the hook. We gotta cut the hook now. I'm like, I'm like, no way! This is the first craziest fish I've ever caught. I gotta get this hook out. Like, I'm not leaving the hook in. Like, I'm going in. I went in up to my like my chest. I'm playing around with the hook. I managed to get it. Thank God we use we use the circle hooks with the barbs crimped down, so it's easy to get it out. I go okay. in there. I grab it, take it out. I mean, anybody who goes for big fish like that most people like to cut the cut the line because they're not crazy enough to go in there with the to get the hook out but I, I i went in there got the hook out and he went on his way real quick it, the the tail the tail fin smacked the water and just freaking took off but that was that was the craziest fish i've ever caught for sure 100 percent. wow yeah that's that's kind of exciting but again i'm going to mention to everybody listen to me carefully people i'm not going to tell you what to do but i'm going to tell you this you know, uh, these fish are very protected. It's not a joke. If you happen to catch one, I don't care what you do. Uh, first of all, protect yourself because you could swing around easily. You know, one of those teeth grabs you. You're going to end up in the hospital and you're going to not go shark fishing again. But uh, uh, do the right thing. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be targeting these fish at all. It's got nothing to do with you. Ta- you know, you shouldn't just be targeting. I'm not going to get any further than that. But, uh, again, I want to mention to everybody, uh, I want to thank you, Chris, so much, man. I, I, I mean, there's so much more to ask. We don't have, to, uh, you know, time to do that. But, again, Chris mentioned earlier, which is the Long Island Shark, man. I'll be leaving his Instagram on the bottom. You're very free, as he said, to DM him with any questions you might have or any ideas you might have about, hey, targeting a shark, mm. uh, you know, Ask him all the questions beforehand because you don't want to do the wrong thing and you don't want to turn around and sue Mr. Poseidon because your leg got ripped off at the surf. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I'm trying to tell you, do the right thing. Yeah, do the right thing. Make sure you do the right thing. Chris, uh, once again, I want to say thank you to you. We will have you on again because there's just so much uh, I want to uh, ask you and so many questions that the... Uh, Subscribers have to. I know they do. And again, DM him on Instagram. You can reach him there. Chris, is there anything else that you want to tell everybody before you go, buddy? Yeah, any shout outs or anything like that? Um, honestly, just thanks to everybody who's following me and thank you for having me on uh, your podcast. This thing, this whole Mr. Poseidon thing, it's going to take off, man. It's <laughs> such a great idea. I like the whole environment, the whole like get thank up and you. everything. It's just, it's, it's, that's, that's one, that's the reason, like, one of the reasons I wanted to even get on, on the show, you know, it's thank like, you, buddy. a very good, very good vibe. To the you fish, make me man. feel good, man. That is such yeah. a good feeling you because it, bro. yeah, no problem. Both me and my wife. We work very hard at it. You have to see some of the fights we get into here at the desk. <laughs> I mean, they're extraordinary. It's probably worse than shark fishing. But in the end, she always wins. I give in, and that's the way it is if you're married. Uh, we've been married now 23 years, 27 together. I love her to death. Chris, thank you so much for uh, 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 being on the uh, yeah. show uh, here. I'm, I'm very, very happy. Uh, to all the subscribers who came on tonight, thank you so much. So let's get into a little bit. You can stay on, Chris, if you want before we go, but let me put on the light here. Uh, now, guys, you guys know what you're going for here. I'm going to give you the overhead look for a second. Oh, it's not on. Let me turn it on. I'm sorry about that. Hey, we're not perfect, all right? I'm not Johnny Carson here, all right? I've got 30 <laughs> people working for me. But uh, I think we got the camera on now, honey. No, I don't see it on. Mm. No. We have no signal. This seems to be a problem. Okay, so I'll put it on the other camera. 
wonder why it didn't connect. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Aww. Usually it connects, no problem. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, very bad. Nothing, no signal yet. One more time, guys, hold on. See if it goes on now. This is the no. final. No. Takes a second sometime. All right. So anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, I'm going to put up the uh, surf reel right in front of my camera here so you guys can see it. So Cape we got Cod. the, yeah, the Soltex no, 6000. There it is. It comes in the box here. That's the Soltex 6000. I got the outside also right here. It's going to go on the outside. So how do you win this reel? It's a $400 reel. You guys can check it out. It's a dynamite reel. Uh, this Thursday, Thanksgiving, I'm sorry, you got to wait, but at the bottom of this video, it's going to post as soon as we finish the uh, show, uh, you leave a comment on the bottom. I don't care what you say. Hi, hello, you don't like me, whatever it is. <laughs> Ryan Oliver, good to wow. see you here. But uh, leave a comment on the bottom, and on Thursday, we're going to have a comment picker. I'll post it, and good luck to everybody who's uh, going for the reel. It's a dynamite reel. Great entrance to surf fishing, uh, this reel. Uh, lots of good reels out there, but I like the Saltex, and uh, it's an introduction to uh, surf fishing. Maybe one day you guys can move up into the um, into the uh, VS, Van Stoll uh, models, and so on. But other than that, uh, honey, are we good? Jason Palmetier, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Definitely always good to see Jason Palmetier, dynamite fisherman from Massachusetts. Jason's always catching the big fish. Why? Because he always fishes hard. And remember, that's the name of the game. Fish safe, fish hard, and fish right. Thank you, everybody, for showing up to the show tonight. Chris, uh, a.k.a. the uh, Long Island uh, Shark Man, thank you again for being on the show. We appreciate you. Uh, other than that, honey, would you like to say anything? So, no, just to be clear, so they are going to post comment once this video ends yeah. and they can watch the replay. Then you post a comment, not a comment here on the live chat. Does yeah, it, you don't put it on the chat. And my wife says, uh, watch the replay. You don't have to watch the replay, especially if you've been Just on Just post it. a comment at Just the bottom. Just post the bottom. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, post a comment on the bottom of that, and yeah. uh, you're in. Thursday, we'll announce the winner, uh, yeah. and uh, good luck. Other than that, thank you for, the, uh, for being on the show. Thank you, AKA, the Long Island Shark Man over there. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. God bless everybody. You got it, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, Thanks, man. Thank you, and we will uh, see you soon. See you soon, everybody. Take care, pals. Everybody to these. Everybody, my subscribers. Thank you to all.